Now, three out of ten candidates at the next general election will be women, rising to four out of ten thereafter. And political parties who fail to meet the target will face a 50% cut in funding. But is candidate selection really at the kernel of the problem or does it come down to more basic facets such as lifestyle, childcare and other commitments? Well, to explore this, we are joined by the two female TDs sitting here in the Midlands. They're both from Fine Gael. Uh, Nikki McFadden and Marcella Corcoran-Kennedy join us. Ladies, good morning. Good morning, morning, Will. And Nikki, maybe to begin with yourself, is candidate selection really at the heart of this issue? Yes. Um, Well, you see, um, I would always say that you should be um, assessed on your merit and and your ability to do the job. But what's happening is that women are not able to get through selection. So this is about making sure that uh, 30% of general election candidates are women, that they're put before um, selection conventions. Mm. But and if you look means, at the membership of the party... But that means then that the, the general public then will elect people based on merit. But the membership of the party, how does that break down in, in gender balance? Well, uh, there's a lot of men. There are a lot of men within in the party. So, but it's 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 changing and I'm really pleased to be able to say that and we have uh, this doll, 31st doll has more women now than ever before there are 25 women so that is very positive but and there were 15% but if, if of, if we're to of take candidates it though, were women as well So, If we're to take it though that the party membership is predominantly male what does that tell you about the appetite women have for politics? Well you see uh, well, heretofore, meetings were held at anti-social times. Like um, Neve Brannock in her contribution said that meetings were held at 12 at noon in one constituency uh, on a Sunday. And that's the time when women would be wanting to spend time with family, mm. you know. So there are there are things like that that can be changed to suit women and things are slowly but surely changing and that is really very positive. I was at a constituency AGM in Longford on Monday night and there were a lot, a huge percentage of the uh, attendants were women and young women at that. So things are changing. So it is very, very, very positive. Marcella, Nikki has served in the Oireachtas before, OK, it's her first term in the Doyle, but she was a senator before that, whereas you are only a few months into this full-time role as a politician. So is there anything about the job that you find a bit of an annoyance or a deterrent that would be uh, gender-specific, if you like? Well, I well, I don't know if it's gender-specific, but it's something that affects families. And I think that the long sittings um, is certainly something that would affect families. In my case, I'm lucky that our children are um, age 21 and 17. Mm. Uh, but certainly if I was um, a, yo- a mother with young children or a father with young children, uh, representing a regional or a, ro- a, you know, a, a constituency that would be far away, and I'm thinking of constituencies like uh, Cork, maybe West Cork, uh, Donegal, Sligo, where you're a long distance from Leinster House, then certainly um, it would certainly have an impact. And I think that was um, one of the key reasons that um, all and I took her decision not to stand mm. was the... The, the, the unfamily friendly hours. Yeah, well, put it another way then, even in your own circumstances, if we rewound the clock 10 years ago, would you have been able to do the job? Well, 10 years ago, I was on Offaly County Council and I found that without the support of family and friends, it would have been incredibly difficult because public life demands uh, long hours during the day, but long hours at night as well. Uh, because the only opportunity, I suppose, for people to meet with you uh, are to invite you to, uh, you know, community group meetings or that type of thing. And in, invariably, it's at night or even at weekends. So without the type of backup that I had, and I was very, very lucky to have it, and I greatly appreciated it, I certainly would have found it very, very difficult to do mm. it. Yeah, it's interesting. It reminds me of an interview we did with Mary O'Rourke, and she had said this on countless occasions, that her late husband, Enda, 
was a real bedrock for her and that he provided immense support and really made it possible for her to do the job. So I wonder, and maybe put this to Nikki, is the problem so much with men in Leinster House or men outside Leinster House who don't give their wives the capacity to do this job? Um, I can't really comment on other people's lives. I suppose I'm a lone parent, so when I got involved in uh, local politics, I was elected first in 99, and my children were, were quite young. They were in secondary school, and my daughter now is 29 and my son is 25, and I'm asking them now, have uh, have they suffered as a result of me, as Marcella said, being out half mm. the night, you know, always going to meetings late into the night. But I wouldn't have been able to uh, function only for my family and, and my friends as well. But there are other... Um, did, did that bother it, you at the time, though? Were you torn? I was, I was torn. I was, and I worried about them as well, you know, trying to be there of when homework was going on or mm. making sure that they had dinner at the right time, etc. So it was, a, it, it? it was a serious balancing act. I, and I actually, looking back on it now, I have such freedom now that they're both grown up. But looking back on it now, it was, it was very difficult. And that when was you the, asked them, by the way, if they felt they had missed out or how, how did they recall it? What feedback did you have? They, they said, I sure, Grandma, we're, we're very well adjusted, they both said to me. Um, I'd say they might have been pleased that I wasn't like hanging over their homework all the time and making sure they were doing what they should have been doing. But there are other facets to this uh, women in politics apart from childcare, like there is a confidence, and this is what Ivana Batik in her study has revealed, that it's um, culture as well. And confidence is a very big issue, that women um, aren't naturally confrontational, and uh, it's harder for women, uh, I suppose, unless you have political background, to, uh, I suppose go into a meeting and, and be confrontational or take on the room as such. Mm. Um, Mind you, I've met and, a couple of women in business who are well confidence. able to do that. There are plenty of women in boardrooms who I would not fancy facing, I can tell you. But. Well, no, that does develop with confidence and with proper mentoring. And, and I have been very lucky that I had people who looked out for me and who supported me and encouraged me. And that is also very important. You need people within the party structure who are going to befriend you and and look after you. And that is something that um, I'm eternally grateful for. You know, I would have had people who uh, believed in me and really wanted me to succeed. So that is something yeah, that's very it's positive. It's an interesting point about confidence and confrontation. And Marcella, mm. if people, fair enough, can develop the skills they need to fend for themselves, do they necessarily want to? Do women want to engage in that typical male posturing that goes on in politics? Well, that's a very good question. Um, and I've reflected a lot on this because uh, I certainly would have been an advocate for a quota system for years and years. And, uh, you know, over the years I've had conversations with people about, well, what is it that's preventing it? Because when I look around me, uh, in all of the organisations in Offaly and across the country, women are uh, um, participating uh, in all organisations across every sector. Uh, the one sector where we're falling down is politics. And we have to ask ourselves, are they clever enough to say, well, I'm stepping away from this because the demands would be too much on my family life? Or are they looking at it and saying, well, there are not role models there. Maybe they feel it's just not for them, it's not something that would accommodate them. Mm. And I, I think that if the quota uh, proposal is successful, and I sincerely hope it will, and I'd imagine it will be, there will be a, a no need for them, I would hope, within 10 years, uh, because the women would have seen um, role models, they would see people, they would see a more balanced parliament and see that it is something that is for them because at the end of the day women are at every level in our society um, working on organisations except where the power is which is in political life and that's where they really need to be in order to have um, I suppose their say in order for us to have a true democracy we need to have 
uh, that other 50% of the population to have their say. Yes, and yet, you mentioned community groups or meetings outside of normal hours and so on. Many of the people involved in community groups will be women and voluntary organisations and so on, but they don't transition into uh, professional politics. And that is the challenge for the political system, uh, all of the political parties, um, is to try and, and encourage women to make that transition. And I think where the parties are going to be challenged by this proposed legislation, uh, I think we will see that. We will see people that perhaps are at the other end of uh, family rearing who will be freer and say, well, actually, you know, I've been working in my community. Maybe now is my time to move to another level. And I think we will be seeing that. Because the challenge to the parties is to think about the next general election. But in order to plan for the next general election, they have to look at the next local election first. Yes. And I think that they're going to have to start looking at it from that perspective. I think the chamber might be a very different place if there were more women. Because one of the big complaints we would get from people on this programme would be about the theatrics of the door, mm. where it turns into a shouting contest and you have the you know, phallic sword fighting, if you like, between men. And if there were women in the chamber, would the the conversation and the discussion be different, do you think, Nikki, if there were more I, women? I, I definitely think it would be different. It, it is different as it is, even in our, our parliamentary party, because we have 25 women. So, um, and we are, we think differently. Um, the old adage that we're able to multitask is so true. And that um, I, I suppose that we, we think logically and we're also in tune with families and with communities, so not saying that men aren't, but um, I think that we think differently. And I think, um, and I believe that um, more women would uh, make a huge difference to the way say for instance the banking system um if there were more women involved because we uh, manage budgets all of the time and it's just interesting that in other countries uh will where they have introduced quotas for instance in spain in in 2000 um um the parliament has gone from 28 percent in 2000 to 36 percent in 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 2008 and the same in belgium the representation by women has increased dramatically where quotas have been introduced. So okay, I think okay but there's one other obstacle, though. Even if the quota is in place and the parties adhere to it and they present 40% or 30%, whatever it will be, mm. female candidates, it doesn't mm. necessarily follow that they will get elected. No, it doesn't, no. But at least if, if the electorate have a choice, if there are more women on, on the ballot paper, they have a choice uh, to vote for a very good woman and there are so many really really bright intelligent women who would like to be able to participate in politics but the party machine still has to promote those women and give them opportunities yeah. you can't just have the token female candidate no. on the and ticket. they need to be supported you're right uh, with with money as well you know because you can't run a campaign uh, without money and there are women who probably don't have money and they need that sort of support as well. What I thought was interesting was at the last general election in February, Marcella Corcoran Kennedy was the only female on the ticket in Leash Offaly. And there were how many? Was it 21 candidates, Marcella? That's right, Well, there were 21 candidates. And interestingly, I found on the uh, campaign trail that both men and women commented on that fact. Mm. And they, they, uh, you know, like this isn't a, gen, a gender battle or anything like that, because a lot of the men of all ages actually pointed it out to me and said, "We do need more women mm. um, in in Parliament." Do you think it served to your advantage then? Well, it certainly did in terms of the transfers, because it was very evident as the counts progressed that I was transferring very heavily. So people who were voting for independence, people who were voting for other political parties were also transferring, giving me very high transfers. So it certainly did work from that perspective. And mm. I think the evidence is there that um, the general public, uh, the voters, will vote for a good candidate regardless of gender. 
So because I'm a woman running, I cannot assume that I will get a perceived women's vote or that men will only get men's votes. If you're a good candidate, the, the electorate will see that and they will vote for you. Because the key thing, and Nikki made the point earlier, is that getting on the um, party's uh, ticket is one thing. Getting elected is quite something else. And for anybody to get into the doll uh, or to get into a local council certainly cannot be called token uh, candidates or mm. therefore, uh, you know, because they were um, there because of a quota system. If you get elected, it's some achievement. Mm. And uh, I think people need to be uh, aware of that. Well, no doubt there will be plenty more discussion about this in the years to come. Nikki McFadden and Marcella Corcoran-Kennedy, both Fine Gael deputies here in the Midlands, thank you for taking our call Thank this you, Will.